Hey, Evan. What? What kind of bug sings a lot? What? A humbug. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to Engage, a family gaming podcast. This is episode 188, and I'm your host, Stephen Dutzman. As always, this is the official video game and board game podcast for EngageFamilyGaming.com. EFG is a website where parents like myself and my co-host come together to make sure everyone has the information they need to get their family game on. This week, finally, my friend Amanda Farrow, the Princess of Power, is back. How are you? I'm back! I am so much better now that we're talking. I, we haven't talked in four weeks. That's too long. <laughs> I know. It is far too long. We need to... Never you know, again. It's Never. worth mentioning, I do have a telephone. I know, but we're millennials. We don't but use what phones. what are telephones? For, we don't use telephones to call. Um, no. But I, it has been too long since I've heard your voice. Um, we haven't spoken since before E3. Ah, uh, yeah. So... It's been that nuts. So, let's talk about the... Let's... So... For those of you wondering, this is a video game podcast, and um, Amanda and I knew that she was going to go and do her real job <laughs> and ta- and learn about the video games, and we knew that eventually she was going to come back, and we were going to have a video game episode, and we were going to catch up about some of the important stuff. Now, um, fun fact, fans of the show heard me talk about cyberpunk and madden and like all the like the stuff a lot so we decided via text message this afternoon that the world is a terrible terrible place right now and we wanted (laughs) to focus on something very different now we wanted cute but not like keanu reeves cute not like that kind of cute right we're looking at like breathtaking i am breathtaking and so are you because we're all breathtaking. I wasn't in the sure. audience for that. I, you were in but the audience. I for, was. So he explicitly said, I'm, I've, I'm just accepting it that he meant the world because that's the kind of person he is. I felt uh, like I, he was talking right to me. But he was speaking right to you. He said, you're all breathtaking. But first he said, you're breathtaking. And no, he wasn't talking to the guy that yelled at him first. He was talking to you specifically. Um, sure. But we're not talking about Keanu Reeves being in um, Cyberpunk, which is a game I really don't care about and not just because it doesn't match my editorial direction I really just don't care Um, but we're going to talk about cute stuff Um, because we started kind of talking about some of the cute things and it just kind of like a waterfall to the point where we had like a decent BuzzFeed listicle worth of cute slash adorable slash mostly cute games that we could talk about oh yeah there's good stuff in there. So, um, so that's what we're going to talk about, folks. But before we get started, I do want to—I do want to take a moment, thank everybody for listening. Um, we do want to make our podcast more interactive, so uh, please feel to reach out to us on social media. Um, and you know, the best way is to like us on our Facebook page or join our community at engagefamilygaming.com/slash/community. Um, and send us your questions, ideas, etc. Um, I have. I, I will, I'm not going to overpromise, but we have some serious cool stuff happening on or around episode 200 of this podcast, which if you can do math or if you can't ask your kid, they definitely can. Um, it, we're getting very close within a handful of months to episode 200, at which point things are going to get wild around here. So if you have things you want to say or, you know, even older topics that you want us to recycle – That's cool because we probably haven't talked about it in five years, so it's fine. So, um, yeah. Um, The topic today is cute games, but I'm reminded again, we haven't done housekeeping and talked about E3 stuff. Are you aware, Amanda, that you are one half of a tie in the predictions between myself and Team Princesses of Power? Yes, vaguely. Okay. Yeah, well, you've been busy. Also, all of those videos came out while you were basically in in the deep end in L.A. Yeah. So. Uh-huh. Um, slightly drowning. You were slightly drowning. It's fine. It's fine. You made it. Okay. That's why I brought a mic. So I wouldn't actually drown. Yeah, that's fine. Um, so um, at the end of our predictions, it was Team Princesses of Power 2 and me 2. 
So we are tied. Mm. Um, there will be um, a Mario Party off Ooh. between um, me and you and Tila. Oh! Yeah, that's what's um, gonna happen. Right I'm there. Gonna, I'm gonna have to have. I'm gonna have to name a champion to help me because it's because it's two on two is not fair. So I'm gonna have to have someone else be on my side. Um, sure. But here's what's here's what's really interesting. So if you'll recall, this was the deciding factor. Um, the fair and just um, commissioner John Robel obviously presided over all these things. Um, and some people have disagreed on this, and I want to hear your thoughts on this. Um, so one of Tila's predictions was that there would be a Sonic game announced. Right? Mm-hmm. They did not announce a Sonic core game. However, my understanding is like there was like a thousand square feet of Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games. Uh-huh. So, which I played. Which you played, because how could you not? Because it's fun and also... It was delightful. So, um... That's a Sonic game, right? It is a there Sonic game. There are some folks who disagree. It's technically a Sonic game. Now, I I agreed with that, even though it took me from my single-handed victory to having to figure out how to play Mario Party. Um, but Or we have to duke it out. Or we'll have to do... Well, the other suggestion was Smash. Um, keeping in mind... immediately Keeping my in butt. mind that I am very bad at Smash. I am also very bad at Smash. But then Tila was like, well, then I'll just have my boyfriend play. And I was like, well, if we're choosing champions, <laughs> that's a very... Di- th- we're, then this I'll is have not- to get my husband to play because he's amazing at Smash. This is that's not- the case. We're not... We're that's not-, not cool. Well, yeah, we're not going to do that because the point is that's that the cool. three of us have to do battle. Um, so the um, people got into the uh, watching the videos and... Um, they, they, uh, a lot of people are really not happy with the judge uh, because he also trashed our community manager's predictions. Um, and uh, so Jeff is actually going to fly out from Michigan next year to defend his honor um, in person, which is great because that means I get more work. Um, who knew all I had to do was just have uh, have the fair and just commission give him crap and trick him into flying out and, and helping us. Anyway. <laughs> I say that because he's listening, and he's, as soon as he hears this, he's going to go into the staff page and be like, what the hell? Um, so, anyway, so it's a tie between the three of us. We're going to be likely streaming Mario Party or something like that um, in the near future, um, and we're working on more competitions so that we can continue this because we have a belt now. Oh, there's going like, to be grudge matches. That's it's an happening. actual belt. Um, John made it. Um, and Jonathan, the man behind the curtain, went out and purchased the belt, and John spray painted EFG on it. <laughs> Not quite the NWO, but close uh, enough for us. That's kind of um, hilarious. It's like you know how much and... I enjoy my my accessories. Oh, so. I I do know. Um, that's why we're gonna have to make sure that all of our competitions are competitions you can actually participate in. That's also true. Well, we figured out how to do E three predictions. But we figured it out. We figured, we figured out. out. We got to do, do my E three predictions. In February, before I even go to GDC, because that's yeah. Because then to be you February. don't break. Then then we can just be fine. Um. Okay. So, all the navel gazing and the silly housekeeping aside, everybody, let's talk about cute stuff. We're gonna start yes. with a game that is actually out and has been out since Friday, and that is uh, Super Mario Maker Two. I think that qualifies as adorable. It's adorable. Um, Even so, Toad is Taskmaster, and I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> Taskmaster is a loaded word for Marvel fans right now, um, but but whatever, it's fine. So he mirrors Mario and Peach and Luigi's abilities. That's cool. If you don't know what I'm talking about, it's a deep cut. You'll just Google it, um, or wait and watch the Black Widow movie. Um, so the um, which is going to be very good. So Super Mario Maker. Um, you have played it for approximately an hour or so, yes? Uh, probably less than an hour, yeah. I, okay. I, I just started playing it today because I have had no time for video games. Yeah, because you've been, you've been getting crushed by the universe. Yes. So, the universe has not been very happy with the fact that I was happy for a while. Yeah, well, guess what? That's why we're talking about cute things. Yeah, Let's right. focus on the cute things. Okay, so Super Mario Maker 2. I have played more than you have, um, but... Um, but I'm more interested in your impressions. So you, your hot take 
What do you think about it so far? What have you been playing in it? Because there's so more I've game played, modes this time. I've only played story mode so far. I haven't gone in to start making friends and start playing their maps or start making my own maps or anything like that. Because mm -hmm. that just makes me want to go back and play Warcraft 2 and make Warcraft 2 maps. So that's probably... Warcraft 2 is definitely not cute. No, it's 100% not cute. So I've only been playing story mode. It's different. Yeah. I guess it's weird. How not weird is it bad. that it exists? Yeah, it's one of those games that makes me think that makes me want to have been a fly on the wall in that boardroom when they were talking about it and getting that initial pitch. Yeah. Because I'm like, how is this a game? How is this a standalone game? You'd think that this was would just be like baked into a standard Mario experience, but it's his own game. And my son Gabe, he loves the first one because we got it for him on DS and he adored it. But it was way too hard for me because even though I'm a decent gamer, platformers are not my thing. I'm no good at them. I love them, but I'm terrible. So that's kind of where I'm at right now is games weird, not bad, but just weird. So I can see where you are coming from. Um, I'm just really interested in why. I don't know why they're calling it a story mode because it's not like it has a story. Um, you're it's building the castle, um, but, but whatever. I mean, you call it a story mode versus like a castle builder mode. It's less characters. I guess they save memory. I don't know. Um, it's fine. It's cool. Right. The, here's what I'm happy about. Um, my favorite part of Mario games are the Mario levels made by actual professional Mario level designers. That's my favorite part of super Mario games. Yeah. Um, that's a, that's hard you know hard pressed to imagine right like i like mario games made by professionals and while i enjoyed super mario maker the biggest challenge that i had is like outside of the demo um and like you know some a few bespoke things that came from nintendo themselves i had to rely on other people to make stuff and the reality is people are in general one of three things a mate when they participate in like play create share kind of stuff they are either amazingly talented slash impossible to find really stupid and terrible which is <laughs> almost all of them or trolls yes and stupid and terrible is like fine so i've stumbled through your level it was at least beatable it was boring you know whatever um the trolls really just got in my way of being like this isn't fun you know, um, but this game with a story mode has a hundred new Mario levels to beat. And that's pretty awesome for me. Now, they're not set up like regular Mario games where there's like themes and things like this. But the theme is that every level is designed to teach you about a different shenanigan that you can pull. Um, you know, I just got done with a haunted house that was all about how to use secret doors and keys. Um, and... Um, made me do some challenges that would never be used in a standard Mario stage, like um, using a musical block and two of the trampoline blocks to stand on them and use them to like bounce off of each other to go to fly up to an incredibly high height. That's, oh, that's not fun. something. That's not something that would be in a regular game. No. Um, but it's here, and so. Really, um, I'm just enjoying, you know, playing through these levels, learning a little bit about the different, you know, what Mario can do. Um, I don't know how much I'm going to dabble in the other modes. Um, I probably will a little. I know um, my oldest is he he is gonna he wants to play and create he's been playing a lot of the online multiplayer which is really interesting like I never really thought really? about yeah he's playing the online I think he's playing it right now I am um so you just play four player competitive um you know and you're racing so you gotta like stay with the crowd but you wanna be the first person to get to the end um that's madness um yeah so I think, I mean, I agree with you. It is weird. Um, this game is going to sell like bananas. Like, this is just going to be... The first one did, too, yeah. I think. Oh, yeah. Um, for a Wii U game. But wow. this doesn't have the limitation of being trapped on a dead platform. Um, this is one of those games that 
I can't wait to see what they do with it because they really didn't do a lot with the first one because it was on it a dead be. console. But now uh, the sky is the limit on what they could do here, uh, which is really rad. I can't wait to see it. Um, There's going to be some cool esports stuff that comes out of this. Mark my words. Certainly. Speaking of competitive stuff, what I really can't wait. Speaking about the story mode is awesome games done quick because you know somebody's oh, submitting yeah, a speed happening. run, um, and I can't wait. Um, how about a race, like a four player race? Um, my only issue, and this is, is that it might be a little weird, is because there are you know a fair number of like menus, just mm-hmm. to like, but whatever. I mean. I watch a, I watched a speed run runs of final uh, once of Final Fantasy four so like that was a lot of menus that's a lot of dialogue um no they skip a lot of it it's crazy no you should yeah. if you're ever mega bored and you want to see someone beat Final Fantasy four in what six hours um that's it six hours um they figure they skip a lot and sequence break a lot a lot. A lot. Oh, that would just break my heart. No, I can't watch that. Oh, yeah. That's it's... one of my favorite Final Fantasy games. No. Oh, they break it. They break it to all get out. Um, They find a way. The big key is they find a way to go back into Rydia's village after it gets burnt the first time, but before you're supposed to be able to. I don't know how they do it. Um, and so That sounds like a glitch. And Oh, it's definitely a glitch. Oh, these are not glitch-free runs, my dear. Um, this is, they, re- they they figure out what seed they're on based on the timing of the crystals shaping up in the beginning or whatever, and they reset it until they have the right seed, and then they count their steps through all the different places because they know when they will be attacked. I'm not even joking, it's crazy. Anyway, that's, that's speed running. Back to the cute stuff. Super Mario Maker 2, it is out right now. Um, if you don't, if you have never heard of it, um, which is super reasonable because this is a sequel to a game that was relatively quiet because it was trapped on a dead system. Go to YouTube. And then it was re-released on, on DS. Yeah, it was released on 3DS. Um, you're right. Um, uh, who does Patrick Klepik write for? Waypoint. Waypoint, okay. He does, right now, call, they're called Mario Maker Mornings and they are explicitly family-friendly. None mm-hmm. of his other content is. However, yeah. if you look up Waypoint Mario Maker Mondays, you'll see a very talented Mario Maker designer making stuff and challenging his friends who are other people. Um, and there's no cussing. He says that specifically. Um, and so you can get an idea what the game is going to be all about. Um, so, yeah, that's Mario Maker 2. I'm excited. I, I have it. Um, my it has son a lot is of potential. It. Yeah, this is going to be a lot of fun. Um, so that's Super Mario Maker 2. That is cute game number one. Cute game number two. This one, I, I'm interested in your opinion on this one. What are your thoughts on ukulele and the Impossible Lair? Or just ukulele in general as an IP? Ukulele, again, it was one of those it was one of those games that I was really excited for, but the actual execution was fairly subpar. And I really needed it to recapture, you know, those Banjo, Kazooie, Donkey Kong country on the N sixty four kind of, you know, yeah, animal it, platformer nonsense. And it, and it didn't. did not. It didn't. It was pretty soulless. It didn't have a whole lot of charm to it. The gameplay was stodgy. Um, it's cute. Like, the, the graphics are cute, the character design is cool and adorable, and I like the environment design, but for the most part, like, I really, I haven't played very much of it, don't get me wrong, I don't want this to be like a, oh, Amanda said all these cool. definitive things about ukulele, no, I haven't played very much of it, but I didn't like what I've played. So, ukulele and the impossible lair, mixing it up a little bit, and I think it might save them because it's a 2D so. game. Yeah, so I think the, that might be the their wacky platformer race. and the, the, the stubborn 3D controls, the camera that was a bit of an issue. They can skip yeah. all that and just make, like, Donkey Kong Country with Banjo-Kazooie. Hello. Like, that sounds pretty good to me. Yeah, it was, like, those games are exceptionally solid. Um, I think that Banjo-Kazooie was... It worked on the Z axis, though the Z axis, so it it was 3D for real because it was on the N64. 
Um, yes. But I love the original Donkey Kong Country. It was such a good game. It was really hard. But, I mean, if we've learned anything from Tropical Freeze, there's still a lot of people that love those kinds of side-scrolling platformers. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, it could be great. It could be another misfire. But I really, I'm really interested to see how they're going to save this IP. Because it could be great. It has so much potential. I agree completely. I mean, they certainly have the pedigree. This is made by a company called Platonic, which is a bunch of people who are former Rare employees from the UK who all helped make Banjo-Kazooie. If you're not familiar with who Banjo-Kazooie is, um, just look up okay. all the stuff about... I mean, he's it's, he's a dude from the N64. They made one 360 game for him. Um, he's in Smash later on this year, I guess. Um, True. He people is, went crazy about that reveal. Um, I mean, I think just because people want it. Um, but I think it's a symbol, an issue of they just don't know what they want. Like, I think people just want stuff. Um, I mean, I'm sure he's going to be a perfect... He doesn't have a sword, so that's great. Um, so... Alright. The... Um, so... I am 100% with you on ukulele. Um, I played it. I was not a massive fan. Um, I found it... I actually found the first one boring. However, I will say, um, this certainly fits the definition of a game for this topic because it is adorable. Because it's a cute it's little lizard adorable. guy and a bat friend. Um, and I love a good 2D platformer. Mm -hmm. I mean, Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze is one of the best games of the last decade. No one talks about it, but it is so good. It's so immaculate in its design. Like, little details matter. Yep. The yep. windmill level Huge. alone is worth it. Oh, it is. That is a masterpiece of level design. Mm -hmm. It really, really is. My, uh, Gabriel's playing it on the Wii U right now. Mm -hmm. He's playing the hard version. He's not even playing as Funky Kong. So, Which, by the way, let's just talk briefly about the genius of including Funky Kong in anything. Like, I just want a Funky Kong, Funky Kong game. Great. Um, yeah, I would play a Funky Kong game. Fun like, fact. Um. Fun fact, Funky Kong was the name of my gorilla pet in World of Warcraft. Um, That's great. Yeah, it was. Um, I was that's very happy with that. Um, that. So, um, so that's Ukulele. We don't have a release date for it, but it's coming soon-ish. Soon-ish. 2020? It mean anything. I think they said Probably. 2020. Um, which, Probably Q2. Yeah, I, I, it's fine. Um, we will talk more about it when it comes out. Um, next, speaking of adorable things, listen, we've already gushed a little bit about this game before. Uh, we're going to talk about Dragon Quest Builders 2. Ah, uh, yeah. Man, they get, they they talked a lot too much about this game during the Square Enix presentation. I was so into it, though. I just sat there and I'm like, were you, I'm going to play you. <laughs> were you in the audience? I was, yeah. That one? So, like, what was the general feeling from the audience? Like, or did you not... Were you incapable of perceiving them because you were in euphoria? <laughs> uh, no, I mean, the audience looked excited. There, a lot of the... So, we were we were down... Mike and I were down below with the, the rest of the media. And, like, the fans were up top. And the fans were excited. They were really amped about pretty much everything that Square put on the screen. Um... But, I mean, the the energy was great. People are excited about it. They like Dragon Quest. They like Dragon Quest Builders. So, I mean, it went through a multitude of releases and re-releases. So I'm looking forward to this. I think it's going to be super fun, especially with the multiplayer mode. Oh, my goodness. You and I are going to have a blast. We are. We are. We are. We're going to have a lot of fun with it. Um, I agree. I think this is one of those. This is a game that should never have been made, but I'm really glad that it did. You know what I mean? Like, it yeah. just doesn't strike me as a game that was, like, destined to be created. Um, but I'm so happy that somebody forced it through. Well, the interesting thing that, like, the the itch that it scratches for me, and I talked a little bit about this, I think, on Twitter, is that, you know, back in the PlayStation 2 era, there was Dark Cloud and Dark Cloud 2, mm -hmm. and those games are fantastic. Mm -hmm. And that, I think, is what Dragon Quest Builders 2 is going to scratch for me, like that yeah. itch of wanting a new Dark Cloud game, I'm going to get it with Dragon Quest Builders 2, which is what else do I want? Uh, I'm going to waste a lot of hours playing uh, that game. Yeah, it's going to be it's going to be great. Uh, fun fact that uh, Dark Cloud 2 is one of the infinite co-hosts, my brother's uh, favorite games of all time. He loves him some Dark Cloud. 
Um, That's really great. Yeah. Um, and you're right. I think this is the game. Uh, I may have to. He doesn't. He doesn't listen because he doesn't listen to podcasts because he's uh, he's too busy. Um, but he uh, he may need to. But the, that's an advantage here because I may need to end up getting this game for him because um, I think he would really dig it. Yeah. If he loves Dark Cloud too, like legit. Yeah. This has got a robust little story with it too. From everything that we've seen so far, it's adorable. It's irreverent. It's accessible. For little ones as well, as long as they can read, you know, they can they can partake. This is for the Minecraft generation that yeah. want a story. They want something that's just a little bit different, but they're not necessarily looking for like Terraria. Also slimes. Also slimes. Seriously. Slimes are the best. Slimes are pretty cool. And golems. I love the golem design in this game. Like the weird just the weird shape they are. Like they evoke that dragon warrior like because Dragon Warrior was my first RPG. I got it with my first Nintendo Power subscription. Um, and so just the way those golems look. Oh, man. Oh, man. Um, all right. This next one. Right in the field. Yeah. Right, oh, man. It hit me right in the nostalgia. Um, so this next one, Sky Children of Light. Now, this yes. one is going to be weird because I don't know how anyone's going to play it. But I want to talk about it because it's adorable. This is being made by that game company. Yes? It is. Um, which is for those who are listening, if if the name that company that game company hits you, uh, it could be because uh, they're the people that made Journey, they're the people that made Flower, um, they made Flow, which a lot of people don't really know about. But it's, they, at the very least, they made Journey, which was the year it came out, the EFG game of the year. Um, it is an immaculate game. It's on it's on the Epic Game Store now. Um, it is. So it's yeah. getting like a new Along lease on Flower. life. Along with Flower, um, Flower is underrated, um, but it's but so Journey cool, is rated correctly. Um, a lot of people view it as a masterpiece. I think it would probably have to be in my top ten of all time. Um, it's one of my very favorite video games. It's the review that I wrote in two thousand and when did it come out? I don't remember. 2000, whenever it came out. Um, It doesn't exist anymore, and I didn't end up saving it, but it was one of the best reviews I've ever written because it just... It was just a phenomenal experience. I've never cried playing a video game before. 2012. Yeah, that was my... That was the last year I was working. I took two years off from 2013 to 2015. um, You know, for raising babies. Yeah. Things you gotta do. Uh, So, yeah. I've never cried playing a video game before, not ever, including all of the years that I've played Final Fantasy games, but I wept doing the sand surfing level. Like, the first time I was like, I don't understand how this is this evocative. How is this even a thing? Yeah, listen, I mean, I am with you. It was crazy. The the first time I played it was crazy, and then I remember distinctly for, like, the months after that, everyone who came to my home played Journey. Like, this is what you did. Um, yeah. and Important. it my was... My son played Journey as one of his very favorite video games. Yeah. Or very first video games, mm-hmm. rather. Yeah, I mean, and it was the... For EFG, it was our 2012. So it was our first game of the year, actually, I think. Yeah, it was our first That's ever awesome. game of the year. How about that? Um, and man, that game is so, so good. Um, and so... The, that game, they can't only make that game. Um, they made Abzu also, but that didn't exactly hit the same level. Um, no, it was still beautiful, but the problem with Abzu is that it was an impossible to control. Like, that that control schematic was really not doing the Also, it put me to sleep, literally. I fell asleep oh. with the controller in my hand. Um, so, um, but you know what? It was super peaceful and underwater and, like, flowy, and I was just like... <laughs> And then I woke up and I was like just swimming in the water. And I was like, you know what? Someone else will enjoy this game. Um, so now they're doing more stuff. And they made Sky the Children of Light. It is an Apple Arcade exclusive? Question yes. mark? Okay, so it's going to be... I think it is anyway. Well, you know what? The Googles. I will find out. Mm-hmm. I bet you it will say it right on their website, right? Probably... So it says here right on the trailer is that you can pre-order Sky Children of the Light on the Apple App Store. Okay. Yeah. 
That sounds an awful lot like an Apple Arcade exclusive. So um, that means it's a mobile game first. I know that their intention, and they have said that their intention is eventually to port this it's to everything. Yeah. Um, so uh, this is going to be one heck of a Switch game in a couple of years. But for those people that want to uh, play it on an iPad Pro. Um, oh, dang. That, um, an iPad Pro that support that at now because of a firmware update supports Bluetooth uh, controllers. Specifically, yep. you can use your uh, PlayStation controllers. Um, nice. That'll be okay. Um, what do you th- What do you think of this? The, the, I mean, I think it's beautiful. Um, yes. But it's got like some weird like social experiment stuff going on because that game company just doesn't make. They don't make just regular games. They've got no. an issue. No, so Nova they, Chen, she just, just, just forget about it. <laughs> just wants to get in on it and, and wants those weird social experiences to be in there. That's part of what made Journey such an interesting game is those benign but profound experiences yeah. and journeying with another with another player. So I think it could be I think it could be really interesting. I'm a little leery about it being a mobile only game, but I think that for it to work as a social experiment that's probably their best platform for it, especially if they're going to be releasing this worldwide immediately. And, you know, it'll be a vast pool of people to draw from because it's a, it's a, that game company game. People are going to flock to it. Absolutely. There's no way that this is going to fly under the radar at all. And it looks gorgeous. It's out this month too. Yeah. We won't have to wait too long in order to play it. Yeah. Which is just how weird is it that, this is the year we get to play a that game company game, but we're playing it on our phones. Playing it on our phones. But you know Wild. what? But guess what? I'm gonna play the hell out of it on my phone. I'll tell you I'm that glad much. You, you. Um, I have a big enough screen. I can I can get the work done. Mm-hmm. So um, all right. So that is Sky Children of Light. Um, if you it, it's Apple exclusive right now. Um, it is. So I bet you if you just go to the app store, you can look. I wonder if it's got a price up there now. Let me look. Why not? Um, I it's just free. It offers in-app purchases, so I'm oh. assuming that it's going to have. It's probably um, going to be like an unlock type yeah, thing. Yeah, it could be. It depends on. Yeah, if this is going to be a premium experience, so we'll have to see. Yeah, I mean, there. It's also going to be part of the Apple Arcade, um, which is coming out this fall. Which so, what that is is that's essentially um, like Xbox Game Pass for iPhone. So yeah, for, for um, uh, iOS games for so I'm, sure. I'm super interested to see what that comes out to. So maybe that's how I'll play it. Um, all right, so that is Sky Children of Light. Next, let's talk about what quietly was one of the most hyped games in our war room during E3. No joke. Anytime a trailer came or an article posted with more information about it, um, one or the other of us went nuts. And that is Spiritfarer coming from Thunder Lotus Games. Um, It was shown off at the Xbox showcase, but my understanding is that it's coming everywhere. Um, It is. It's it's, not an exclusive. But it's Game Pass. Um, so that means if you are a Game Pass subscriber, um, it's zero dollars or zero additional dollars. Um, Amanda, tell us a little bit about Spirit Fair. So I didn't have the pleasure of seeing it behind the scenes. I was too busy doing businessy things. So what my understanding is about Spirit Fair, aside from the fact that it is unbelievably beautiful and the handcrafted illustrations are just you know what they you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of Battle Chef Brigade. I don't know if you ever played that on the Switch, but mm-hmm. that's one of my favorite games probably of the last couple of years is Battle Chef Brigade and it has a lot of the same kind of feelings. I don't know much more about the game other than even though it looks uplifting and beautiful and all of these wonderful things, it's actually a game about death. Yeah. Which so, is a little I mean, that dark. Kind of, it's but... a little dark, but I mean, we have to talk about... It's one of those things, right? We we talk to our kids about the hard topics, and if one of those topics has to be death, why not have a game that they can play with and understand? You know, maybe this is, you know, this is how you learn how to say goodbye. Like they say... Even though it's counterintuitive, 
but I'm into it. I think it looks gorgeous. I'm going to play it immediately when it comes out. Same. I will play that game. Same. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty excited about it for a lot of the same reasons that you are. I think I think there's something to be said about like accessible games that talk about um, you know, that that talk about deeper topics. Um, for a lot of kids, some of that's just going to flow right over their head and they're just going to be able to play it. I mean, if you want to talk, like, let's be honest, uh, anybody that watches Toy Story knows that those games are not about toys. No. Um, at all, right? So, um, so, but kids love them all the same while the rest of us are crying and confusing our children. Um. It's true. uh, So, uh, it's. I think this is going to be a similar situation. Not that I'm going to immediately compare this to like immaculate entertainment, like toy story, but I think it's going to be a similar situation. Um, mm-hmm. I love the animation and I love thunder Lotus games um, that they did Yachten, which is, um, you know, a 2d kind of top down. Um, I, I souls like is really the only way to describe it. Um, which is really good. I'm terrible at it, but I enjoyed it. Uh, they also made Sundered, uh, which is really cool. Oh, um, that's right. Sundered is a great game. Which is, and so these, th- this is a, this that is a That was team. another game that was really difficult, like had some difficult topics that it needed to discuss and it did it through gameplay. Yeah, exactly. Um, and Yachten wasn't exactly light on the themes, um, but clearly its mechanics were more important. Um, but these, this team knows their stuff. Oh, yeah. Um, they have a great pedigree. This is, this is from my perspective, Thunder Lotus is one of those developers that is one really big indie game from being, you know, like in being something, somebody that most gamers just know their name. You know what I mean? Almost a household name. Almost. Almost. I mean, in order for an indie developer to to get, I mean, th- this is they're not quite double fine. Um, although I can't call them indie anymore because they're owned by Microsoft. Damn it, Microsoft! You ruined all of my indie game metaphors. Um, That's going to be an interesting story. I'm in the midst of trying to set up an interview with Tim Schafer about that for Game ooh, Daily. I wish I could be quietly like blind copy blind carbon copied on that Skype interview. Um, or I'll go with you. If you're going to go visit him, I'll be, I'll carry your bags. Um, that would be awesome. Um, he has kids, so true. Um, I could talk to him about my thing. Um, so that's spirit fair. Yeah. This game is going to be, I, I, Dark Horse, this could end up being a bunch of people's game of the year. It could also be terrible, but I don't think so. Um, don't they think haven't made a bad game yet. Um, also, no. it's adorable. Go look at a trailer. Um, it's Go very... and get punched in the feels. Yeah, it's... Yeah, man. Yeah. Go to YouTube. Look it up. Spirit Fair. It's spelled as you think it is. Um, next. All right. I know you've been waiting for this one. Because mm-hmm. you were shouting at me through text message and Discord and every means that you and I communicate... Sure. From the minute E3 was happening, um, Am- Amanda, tell me, preach me the to me the gospel of Fall Guys. Oh my goodness! Okay, buckle up. Fall Guys is the Take actual trip. best. It's the actual best battle royale game to ever exist, ever. It is wow. a combination. It is a non-violent battle royale, by the way, and you play as these dopey Play-Doh-looking figures as they amble around and they're completely ridiculous. But the point is along the lines of um, Ninja Warrior and Total Wipeout, where you are put through all of these rigorous, nonsensical competitions. Like one of the ones that I did was trying to discover which doorway to go through and you got whittled down and whittled down and whittled down until it's like three doors. And then I'm jumping through that last door and I'm like, yeah, I got first place. Um, and then one of the other competitions was like you had to run around and, and steal people's tails yep. off of the back of their, their silly avatars. Which is and funny because that's a game that you play in um, four-year-old soccer practice. 100%. Yes. <laughs> and I was like, what? Yeah. And so their plans are that they're going to have a bunch of these courses. There's going to be, I think, 
I wrote about it on Super Parent. So I think there's supposed to be 30 courses planned and they're going to have a bunch of other courses that they're going to be rolling out over time. They want this to be a really big deal and it's all procedurally generated. So you never know which competition you're going to be into. Um, so you go into the first competition and there's 100 people. It's you versus 99 other other people. And then you go into the second competition, and it's you versus, you know, 49 other people, and then it's whittled down, whittled down. I won, I won both. I took the crown both times. I wow. am the Fall Guys queen. Wow. They That's thought impressive. I was a plant. They, they thought, thought I was a plant. plant? Well, yeah, I mean... Yeah, they thought I was, that, that I couldn't be good at video games. So, like, the other journalists were just like, she's a plant, she has to be one of the devs, and I'm like, no, I'm just better than you, sorry. <laughs> I'm just better. Um, man, Fall Guys. Whenever I saw it, because oh, so good, the trailer was during the uh, kind of funny sh- trailer. Yes. It was like during their thing, and mm. I was like, "What is this?" And then I did. I wrote it down, and I did some that homework, thing. and then I mentioned it to you offhand, and then you just came out. There's a string of text. You were like, it was like a meme. Um, it was really I like it was just. You shouted through text message at me, and I was I like, did. "Oh, okay." I, I guess. shouted very loudly at you. Um, but I was here's really the, excited. All cuteness aside, um, shout out to all the parents that want their kids to be able to play a battle royale game, but didn't want to have guns. This um, doesn't have guns. Never will. No about, blood. No explosions. No death. Nothing. Yeah, I want to find the lady that was at our panel at PAX East, who was like, "Hey, I really want my son to play this game, but like, I just don't really feel right about having guns." And being able to be like, hey, look, there is look, one fall now. Guys. Look, Fall Guys. Um, and, yeah, man. Oh, it, it does look super fun. I can't wait until it comes out. Did they say when? Uh, hold on. I think I have that. There's no specific release date yet. But let me take a look for... I think it's next year. I think that's the only thing that we know. So it's coming. It's coming. Just not now. So uh, yeah, it's going to be out in 2020. It'll be available on Windows PC and PlayStation 4 at launch. Um, Mediatonic didn't, you know, the developers didn't let me know whether or not the game would be on Switch, Xbox, or Mac. But uh, They must yeah, have been are... super excited to hear everyone say, is it coming to Switch? Is it coming to Switch? Is it coming to Switch? I think that he got kind of fed up with me asking when it's coming to Switch and call <laughs> me when it's on Switch. Yeah, I mean... It's it fine. Was... He, they, the developers, rad, super, super cool, wonderful, is, chill folks from the UK. Is this their first game? No. Like as a group? No. They've made a they've made a couple of other games beforehand. But this is going to be their first mega hit. Because um, this this strikes me as well. There, you said they're Mediatonic. Yeah, Mediatonic has been around since two thousand and five. Oh, so they probably made some stuff. Yeah, I think their their big stuff was Foul Play in 2012 and Had a Full Boyfriend, which came <laughs> out in 2014. So oh. if you ever wanted to date a pigeon, they made it possible. In the apocalypse, I guess, spoiler, kind of. Also, Had a Full Boyfriend is awesome. <laughs> yeah, not good for us, folks. No, um, no, but it's just not kid friendly, but it's super, it's a super fun game and it is so tongue in cheek. Very, very this is a dating simulator about pigeons. Um, yes. The uh, I remember the first time I ever heard about that game was the Gamers with Jobs guys. Like all got hooked, like a handful of them got hooked on it all at once. Um, so I still haven't played it because I just... Dating sim games are not really your jam. You should play Dream Daddy anyway, though. I mean, it did come to Switch. Switch. It's on Switch um, right what's, now. Is it rated T? Dream Daddy? Yeah. Uh, I think so. I don't think it's M. You want to talk about cute friggin' games, though. Hello. Well, that's that's a different kind of cute. No, it's the same kind. Yeah, it's rated T. It's definitely a different kind of cute. It's definitely a different kind. Are you going to... Do we, I mean, are we really... I mean, I'm not going to argue with you because I know you're more artistically minded than I am. And you're better with words than I am, but if you really want to throw down with me no, about I'm whether Dream Daddy is the same kind of cute as, say, um, perhaps our next game, Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening, if you want to talk to me about if they're the same level of cute, I mean, I'll throw down. They're not. They're 
Um, they're very, they're different, very different kinds of cube. But Dream Daddy and building a dad zona is a required. It's required. I'm probably gonna play it eventually. It's super uh, adorable. It's Mike fine. and I played it together. We made him into the dad zona. Of course you did. Um, and of course you did. I can't be upset about that. Um, so let's talk about Legend of Zelda: Link's yes, Awakening. I played it. So I'm so jealous of you because I'm gonna play it. It's just I gotta wait until like I can give them dollars for it. Um, what did you think of Legend of Zelda: Link's Awakening? Is super super cute. I love the graphics. I love the classic Zelda appeal. The level design was really interesting. I didn't feel like I was getting bogged down in systems to begin with. And I also didn't feel like I needed to go and read a ton of tutorials to figure out what the heck I was supposed to do. Mm -hmm. It was just really beautiful. It was beautiful to sink into the experience. I only played it for, I think, 20 minutes. But it was... Which is a pretty meaty demo for E3. Yeah. Um, but go on. But it was it was great. I really, really enjoyed it. And full disclosure, Zelda games are not really my thing. Like Yeah, we've been over all. this. I've we've forgiven you. I I've know. forgiven you because I love you. But I know. I know. I appreciate that. The last Zelda game I really loved was A Link Between Worlds. And what's really cool about Link's Awakening is apparently it really draws upon all the things that made Link to the Past. Um, an exceptional experience. Link to the Past is Mike's favorite Zelda game, which I hear about a lot when I talk I'm, about Zelda. And I'm how I never sure. played Link to the Past. Um, I think you should play Link to the Past, because if you like the Link Between Worlds... I loved Link Between Worlds. Oh my goodness, I was obsessed with that game. I played it so much. Yeah. Um, but Link's Awakening is going to be well worth the wait. It's, it, like, uh, it's great. I... So, for those looking for some some hard facts, now that they're sold from the the person who's actually put hands on the sticks, um, Link's Awakening is a remake of a Game Boy game. It is a weird ass Game Boy game because Super esoteric. because um, it's a Zelda game that has Goombas in it and Chomp Chains in it. Um, and it wasn't even made by Nintendo, to my understanding. Is this one of the ones that was made? This was made by Capcom, right? I think so. Um, yeah, they did the handheld ones in the beginning. So, like, this wasn't even made by Nintendo. Oh, and crazy is this. It's got a jump button before Breath of the Wild. Hello. <clears throat> um, and there are 2D sections. Mm -hmm. Like, when you go underground and stuff. So, like, yep. there's a lot of weird stuff going on in this game. Some of which vanished into, the, into time. But some of it kind of really does inform and has informed Zelda games moving forward. Um, yep. So this is one of those, um, and they, they completely redid it in this neat, like, chibi claymation style. Um, it's cleaner than claymation, um, but it really does look like toys to me. Um, did they feel like they were toys while they were moving, or? No. no. No, it just felt like adorable animation. What it reminded me of was uh the Wind Waker animations and that level of fluidity. And again, I didn't play Wind Waker, so I can't speak to the quality of the game, but I know that, that is, it's a beloved game. And it's also incredibly divisive because, you know, a lot of Zelda fans are just like, why would you do this to Zelda? Um, but I feel like it's given that same kind yeah. of Wind Waker treatment where it's just very... We talk about bespoke, right? That's what it felt like. Yeah. Man, I'm excited. It's coming out later on this year. We don't have a release date yet. Oh, no. Did they give us a release date? No. We don't. I don't. No, we don't. Think. They didn't. They said later on this year. Um, Man, am I excited. It is a full release. It is. Uh, so even though it is a remake of a Game Boy game, they really put work into this. So it's going to be a $60 game. Um, I can't wait. Day one purchase for us. It's coming September 20th. Oh. Wow. So, so it's, it's, uh, it's doing the thing. Man. Get your pre-order in. Yeah. I'm gonna, pretty sure I'm there's gonna play. Oh, there's definitely an Amiibo. I already pre-ordered that. <laughs> of there's... course you did. You and Mike. <laughs> um, the, um, of course I did. Um, I, I, there are very few that I actually make a point to get. Like, I raced out to get the Shovel Knight Amiibo. That's obviously. fair. Obviously. Um, yeah. I know how much so, Shovel Knight. Yeah. 
So, yeah, absolutely. Um, we got the Ryu one. We got the Cloud one. But, like, I don't need, like, all the Fire Emblem guys. So I don't collect them. But, like, I get the important ones. The only Amiibos that I personally own are both from Monster Hunter Stories. And that's different. I had to, and that's I had to import. I had to import those from Japan. Yeah, no, those are adorable. If they I were sold them. in the United States, I would have gotten them. So, yeah, um, them. so man, September. The, the, here's the good news: it's September. The bad news is it's also September. But at least it comes out, and we have a month and a half or so to finish that before uh, our next game, Pokemon Sword and Shield. Ah, uh, yeah. So how can we talk about cute things without talking about Pokemon Sword and Shield? Um, it was at E3. Which I played. You yeah. played. You played it. it um, is. So it was at E3. Um, they showed us a little bit more detail. Obviously, there was a Pokemon Direct the week before. Um, but yeah. they, they showed us a little bit more detail during the Nintendo presentation. But then they really blew up the world almost literally. And probably they blew up a lot of people's Pokedexes um, shortly afterwards. <laughs> Um, before we talk about random controversies about Pokemon, let's talk about your time on the sticks with the Pokemans. How did it go? So it's it feels different but the same. Sure. I don't I don't know how else to I don't know how else to articulate that when I was in the gym battle. So we were doing a water gym because we were going to face NASA. And Yep. So I was going through and I was solving the puzzles to try and get back to Nessa and facing all of the Pokemon trainers along the way. And that was great and making sure that I could, you know, do my thing. So I get to the final battle with Nessa and I have Yamper. And everybody should know what Yamp- who Yamper is. Oh, Yamper, Yamper, yeah. Tell us about Yamper because I Yamper think this is, is important. is the goodest boy yep. with his little corgi butt. And you can make his little corgi butt a very big corgi butt. Yeah. When you use, what is it called, Dynamax, I yeah, think? Yeah, when you make them Dynamax, which is a really stupid name. It's kind of a weird name. I don't love it. But um, the conceit is is that you make your Pokemon Dynamax. It's a it's a maxed out Pokemon, so it gets, it gets huge. And it like takes up a huge portion of the stadium that you are battling the gym leader in so i made my my cute little corgi butt into a giant corgi butt and proceeded to get the giant corgi butt's ki- butt kicked because it wasn't the right type because of course it wasn't i just really lightning wanted... type yeah so i mean it didn't it didn't go the way i wanted it to obviously but i wanted to play around and see what it was all about and so that was it was really interesting because the the person that was handling my demo, so not my not the PR person, but the person that was doing the demo, was like, "So what do you know about Pokemon? And do you know like how all the types work?" And I'm like, "Girl, I have been playing Pokemon since I was my eldest son's age. Yeah. I know what's up. I know what's up." So the new Pokemon, the new t- Pokemon are gonna take some time to get used to because they're very different than what i'm used to than you know the gen one through five i think it's gen one through five that we're dealing with in like pokemon go and stuff like that right and that we had in let's go pikachu and let's go eevee yes um but it's completely different and we we need to talk about that a little bit because it's completely different and the rest of the pokedex is going away yeah, I mean, that's the controversy. So now that we've kind of talked about con- some of the experience, the big controversy is the national Pokedex that allows you to eventually, after you finish the game, um, bring in other Pokemon from previous generations. Yeah. Um, that is going away, and the only ga- Pokemon that you'll be able to bring in from previous games will be um, Pokemon that are native to the Galar region, which is where the new Pokemon game takes place. Now, we don't know which Pokemon are going to be included in no. the Galar region. Um, I've only seen a handful of Pokemon so far. Yeah, they're. I mean, we're gonna. They're gonna put. It, 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 they have done it before. They did it with Sun and Moon, where. In the months leading up to it, they just put out trailers where they just showed yeah. off 10 and 15 Pokemon. And then yeah. those of us that don't have time waited a few minutes, and literally within 15 minutes, they were all on Bulbapedia. So, like, we didn't have to do a lot of work. 
Um, pretty nice, right? Those it was Boulder pretty great. Fans know what's up. Um, and the um, so we'll obviously know more, probably all of them, even before. But um, you know, there could be a lot of the fan favorites will be included. But the reality is, everyone's fan favorite will not be because exactly because there are too many Pokemon. It and it was becoming untenable to continue to build out the Pokedex for every Pokemon game, have thing, have everything go into Pokemon Bank. Yep. And then you can bring it into all of these different experiences, including Pokemon Let's Go. And it just, it got to be too much. And it doesn't make the game accessible for new players. It just makes it that much more difficult to bring younger players in or players that have never experienced a Pokemon game before. And yeah. quite frankly, a game's for kids. It's literally for kids. Yeah. Oh, I talk about that a lot, um, you know, and I had I haven't gotten into the argument um, on here, uh, but on my own personal Facebook page, I had a number of friends who, around the time that Sun and Moon was announced, really went on this kick about how they wanted a more uh, like mature Pokemon experience, and I was like, "You're Dude, never gonna get it. It's not for they you." They will literally never do that. No. Um, this is a kid's game. This is a children's game. It is targeted for children. The fact that you have enjoyed it for as long as you have is wonderful, but they're not going to, they're not going to change it. Um, and it makes sense. Um, also like it doesn't necessarily have, I mean, ostensibly one of the reasons that they're not doing it is because they want to actually be able to release a video game rather than having to reanimate all of them. Hello. If that is a true, if that is truly the reason why, or a big pun, a big it's portion of be it, part of it, it's sure. something else. If if that is more than half, right, then eventually they may relent, um, and Maybe. just start doing it. The reality is, Pokemon Sun and Moon. I don't Moon, think they're gonna though. I don't think so either. Um, but I think it's possible. I mean, if you think about it this way, they do have that new Pokemon connection app. Right? Yeah. That we have. Yes. Um, I think. That Pokemon Direct was such a weird direct. Oh, the wacky one? That Pokemon presentation. Yeah, yeah. the one that was in Japan. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was weird. Um, the. So. I could imagine that they. Let's say they leave Charizard out of the Gala region. Mm hmm. Um, which at this point I think is a given. Honestly, um, let's say they leave him out. I think it would make perfect sense for the Pokemon company to say, hey, you know what? If you go to Target, scan this thing with your phone, you can get Charizard and, you know, like do those event Pokemon. But rather than have them be legendaries, have them be antiquities. Mm -hmm. um, I think that makes total sense as a way, you know, like there are obviously some that just don't need to show up. Right. Uh, but I think that there are iconic Pokemon from previous gens that, especially if it's bring them into your gallery region, you got to go to this event. Like, I think, you know, there are a lot of folks that aren't super attached to the legendaries um, because they're right. cool. But, like, if you mean to tell me that I got to drive my kids to Target to go get Charizard or to go get Squirtle or, you know, like something like that or Mew. Right. Sure. Like we would do it, and so I think bringing back some of the antiquities has the opportunity to to generate more engagement after the game comes out. So I think that and is I know possible. that engagement is a huge metric for a lot of these companies. That's how they measure a game's success is long term engagement. Yeah. So that's was one of the biggest buzzwords that I heard at E three this year was engagement, engagement, engagement. Yeah. Um, and it makes sense. I mean, think about all yeah. the games that are essentially live services. The reality is Pokemon is a live service and has been. You just don't yeah. play it within the game. You got to go places. Um, and they created a piece of software specifically to facilitate that. So um, mm -hmm. here's the good news. Um, those fireworks are on my end. If everybody hears that, that was weird. Um, it's, it's almost the 4th of July. Nothing. Um, okay. There's people I don't know. Shooting Canada off. Day was yesterday, so that's what I care I about. I know that was important. Um, so yeah, let, let's just talk about how crazy is it? So my, I, my son took a voyage with me while we were writing up these show notes, talking about Yamper and realizing that the Gala region is supposed to be the UK mm -hmm. and the queen of England has a Corgi. And mm -hmm. then he like put those two things together and was like, Boom. um, 
It's like, of course they're going to put a corgi in. Because, like, she is famous for loving them. It's true. And they're I mean, adorable little corgi. And being, the, and being the queen. But, like, she, arguably, the internet loves her more for loving corgis. Um, because if, if the internet loves anything, it's corgis. It's corgis. Um, I think corgis Yamper... Um, here's the real question. Do you think Yamper's going to evolve? Or think Yamper is going to be a no evolution Pokemon just because they think? I don't know, because I thought Litten wasn't going to evolve, and then Litten got weird. Yeah, but so... Litten, wait, hold on. Litten turned into John Cena. It was okay. <laughs> <laughs> Litten turned into John Cena. You know, putting it that way. All right. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. fine. It's All fine. Right. Um, so, Fair. anyway. So, let's... Okay. So, let's let's talk about the if we're going to talk about cute and video games discussed at E3 I think there is no game we can talk about or that we need to talk about more than Animal Crossing New Horizons arguably the cutest game on earth ah so <laughs> just yelling <laughs> the news is twofold one it has a title now we know that it, it is. we don't we don't just have to call it Animal Crossing for Switch. We can call it Animal Crossing New Horizons. Um, we also know it was delayed uh, from 2019 to 2020. Um, I called that months ago. Um, not like yeah, it I knew was it wasn't a, coming this year. Not that it was a tough call. Um, it just doesn't need to come out this year. I mean, this year is no. kind of bananas. Push it back. Also, apparently, by pushing it back, it means that their employees can have good work-life balance. I support this. Mm -hmm. Um... So, uh, delay everything if it means people can, like, spend time with their children and, like, sleep. Um, so, man, they told us a lot of details. I know, did did you get to play it? I did not. Did anyone get to play it? I don't think so. If okay. they did, it was behind closed doors at separate meetings away from, uh, okay. away from E3. Because I was on the showroom floor but I was up top in their meeting space. Okay. So, Who you know, I got to see things that the press was supposed to see, but the very special important press probably got to see Animal Crossing. So, but we both watched some of the stuff, and I know you yeah. guys covered it on Super Parent, so that means you we edited did. some stuff about up, it. I'm about to bring up our, uh, our stuff about it from my beloved managing editor. She's amazing. All right. Oh, she didn't go into a ton of detail, though. That's okay. That's weird. She might have written it before the details were released, because this is one where they showed us some details, and they did one of those one-minute-long yes. trailers during the 45, you know, during the, the Nintendo Direct that was like mm -hmm. a minute long, but it showed a lot of stuff. Yeah. But then they really got into detail during the treehouse, which... Right, and I don't think that we wrote up the treehouse stuff. So that's actually not on Super Parent. So if oh. you have details that you have written down, regale me. Um. Okay, so I do have details. What? So here are some of the things that we know. Um, the big key is you are brought to a, a tropical island. So the game takes place Smart. on an island. Um, the things that we know are that it has a crafting system. Yes. Um, so you're going to be gathering resources and using those to make things rather than mm -hmm. picking fruit and selling the fruit. So it's going to be less about like an economic engine and more crafting, which makes perfect sense in 2019. It appears that you can choose where the various villagers that move into your house uh, or not your house, uh, into your, into your island. Um, it's like a way for them to, um, like you can kind of pick where their houses are. We don't mm -hmm. know for certain. However, um, one of the treehouse people uh, went to the map, and two of the houses were like suspiciously <laughs> neatly rowed. So we assume that that means that you can do that. Um, how about this? You can sit now. On the ground. I mean, <laughs> um, little little details all over the place. You can sit little on details. the ground, um, and uh, you can now hairstyles, skin color, um, and clothing are number one changeable at any time through menus, but also um, 
you could do whatever you want. All hairstyles available for either gender. Um, so you can just kind of go do what you want um, and make yourself. Which is, I mean, yes. Yeah. I mean, it's about time. I mean, isn't mm-hmm. it in the old Animal Crossing, if you wanted to make a person of color, you had to get a sunburn? Is that what I is yeah. that what I read? So That's what I remember, anyway. So, I, that's not a thing anymore. Now you can, you know, our boy Khalif could, could make himself. <laughs> Although, do they have a bald option? I'm sure they have a bald option. Can you be I'm bald? I'm sure they will. Um, I'm sure they will. Hopefully they do. Um... <laughs> So, that would be a serious oversight if they don't. That'd be weird. Well, I'm sure they would just patch it in if they forgot it. Um, they've been somewhat That's responsive fair. to that stuff. So, mm-hmm. yeah, this is probably the... I mean, Animal Crossing is one of the biggest games of next year, and next year is already really stacked. It is. Yeah. Um, but like, I, all around for, for a, you know, After Dark stuff and for family-friendly games. Like, it's going to be a crazy year next year. Right? Yeah, oh my God. And this year's been kind of light. Like, it's it's going to be 2017 all over again. Really, that's what it's going to come down to. In 2020, it's going to be like 2017 all over again. Ugh. That was a slog. Ugh. Man, I don't want to think of... I mean, yeah, 2017 was amazing, right? Because I got to play Breath of the Wild, uh, the best video game Nintendo has ever made, full stop. Um, if you disagree, at me, I guess, but... I am prepared for that fight. Um, do you want to? Do you want to? Do you want to? Do you want step to be now, or do you want to have a separate episode <laughs> where we throw down about what the best Nintendo game is? Yeah. Oh, it'll get contentious as heck. Yeah. Well, I mean, all arguments like that get contentious as heck. Um, so, and and also Mario Odyssey, and also it's just so many good games. Doing that again will be terrifying, but at least I'm saved because I don't care about Cyberpunk. So, like, that helps me doesn't help me. No, because you do, like, you are interested in Cyberpunk. Yeah, it's a problem. You, it's Cyberpunk fine. is 100%. Wait, wait, hold, on. hold on. Cyberpunk is not cute, so we can't talk no. about it. No, um, but Cyber... it is my aesthetic. Yeah, it is definitely your jam. Um, You know what? You can play it for me. Thank you. I will. I, I will. appreciate it. I I'll needed take one help. For the team on that one. Yeah, I needed help. I got you. Um, you got me. So got those you. are our cute games. Animal Crossing. You know, it, yay! If, Just how about, yay! How about this? If somebody comes to me and says, "Animal Crossing," I came from the future, and Animal Crossing: New Horizons is the engaged family gaming game of the year for 2020. I would not think they were crazy, and you know, like. Yeah. There's going to be some stuff. I think it's even possible we'll see the freaking sequel to Breath of the Wild next year. Like, because who the heck knows? What? Maybe. Maybe. Would you that be might surprised? Be, I think that's going to be a 2021 game. No, it wouldn't necessarily surprise me. But I think that if they're going to do something, it might be alongside a release of, like, a pro version of the Switch. Yeah, that's true. Um... Either way, I'm, I'm going to buy the crap out of it. I know. Um, about it. Oh, my God. <sighs> um, so, but it's not cute. So, we're not going to talk about it today. Um, no. So, but anim- but if somebody told me Animal Crossing was the EFG game of the, sh- game of the year next year, uh, I would not think they were crazy for that reason. I might have other concerns, but I'd be like, you know what? I can buy that um, because yeah. it's, and it's coming out at a very good time, um, you know, in the spring. I mean, it's April, right? Uh, March. March? Is it March? Yeah, it's March. Okay, March. Still, good time. Um, mm-hmm. It doesn't need to worry about the cyberpunks. And, like, th- that's the thing. It's kind of immune to a lot of that. Because, because the same people that are going to be playing cyberpunk are still going to play Animal Crossing no well, matter what. I, well, I think that's probably true. But I think the other key is, like, Animal Crossing has always been about short play sessions, right? Like, mm-hmm. Animal Crossing is a game that tells you to go away. Whereas very few games do that. That's Animal true. Crossing is like, check me out. You can do stuff for a half hour. And then why don't you go take a nap? Because sleep is important. <laughs> um, I, oh, and, well, and, I want nap. And um, we're going to have to do a little bit every day because you can't mess with the time anymore. What? That's also true. Other thing. Like, you can't even do cloud saves. Like, they're not even allowing cloud saves um, because of shenanigans with changing the time. Um, which is terrifying because I don't know. 
Uh, you've got to be able to back it up, but just not transfer it. Or no? Yeah, I'm I'm concerned about that. That was a big red flag for me. It really was. Because what if something happens to your Switch? Yeah. That's what's concerning me. Because they're yeah. Mm. Well, they're Thanks. gonna have to they're gonna have to address it. They're gonna have to address it. Uh yeah, they absolutely are gonna have to. Because people are gonna ask them, like you. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. So um, That's my big question. So those are some of the cutest games from E3 2019. Um, it is possible that we missed stuff. So if you saw something that caught your eye, um, why don't you come uh, join our community and tell us all about it? Because I want to hear it. If there's something cuter than these things, I want to know. Um, and you can go there by going to engagefamilygaming.com slash community. Uh, we are over 300 strong. We're actually over 315 strong now. Oh, dang. We grew. We grew by a, quite a bit. Quite a bit. So, um, until next time, folks. Next time, it is board game time. Um, oh, I'll be back for board game time. We have, I have stuff. Um, I played Wingspan, so we can talk about that. Um, I played the new hotness. By the way, it does live up to the hype. Um, and um, also, I know that mallards are the most common duck in North America. Did you know that? I, I did know actually that. know that. I know that well because you're from Canada. Is that is that like a Canada thing? Maybe. Also, you're really smart. But, but also, <laughs> no, it's probably I just a wa- thing also, I wanted to make yeah. it a Canada thing. So, um, so we're gonna be back for board game week next week, um, and uh, so Linda will be here. We have some Dungeons and Dragons stories to tell us because Linda, me, and a bunch of children played Dungeons and Dragons last night for the first time. We finally That's got the family brilliant. campaign up. Um, uh, we had to have a discussion about how to play a suspicious character without ruining the game for everyone else. Oh. That was the discussion we had with our 10-year-old. Um, he learned a very valuable lesson. So um, that's what we call a tease in the podcasting business. Until next time, uh, I hope that you enjoyed listening as much as Amanda and I enjoyed recording it. Do yourself a favor. Uh, go find Super Parent and GameDaily.biz across all the internets and like and follow, subscribe. You know the business. Um, Amanda is Amanda Farrow on Twitter. We'll put that in the description. You should follow her because she likes to tweet out cute things and wonderful selfies and, um, like vicious defense of her employees. Yes. Um, I got really mama bearish on Twitter yesterday. Um, you did. real mad. You did. Um, but I appreciated it. Um, so until next time, folks, don't forget to get your family game on. We'll see you next week. Bye.